Elon Musk put a computer inside a monkey's brain. What could possibly go wrong? This is Nerdist Now. As we glide into February 2021, it shows no signs of slowing down when it comes to news stories that make you say, but why? Tesla, SpaceX, and weird baby name CEO Elon Musk had a meeting on Sunday to talk about the latest developments happening with his brain machine neural interface company, Neuralink. Back in August, Musk hosted the first demonstration of Neuralink's brain machine interface technology by trotting out three very uncooperative pigs who had the wireless coin-sized device implanted inside of their brain. Now this demonstration showed real-time neural signals from one of the pigs, which Musk named Gertrude. And according to Musk, Gertrude had the implant for about two months prior, which, according to The Verge, recorded signals from a part of her brain linked to her snout. When her snout touched various objects, the device would indicate when neurons inside of Gertrude's brain were firing. Now, Neuralink was founded in 2016, and it is funded primarily by Elon Musk. The chip itself is designed with tiny, flexible threads that are approximately 50 microns wide and 5 microns thick, or approximately 10 times thinner than a human hair. That is too delicate for big, meaty human hands, so a surgical robot, with the assistance of engineers and neurosurgeons, is tasked with the job of surgically implanting said device. Neuralink hopes to treat brain injuries, paralysis, and trauma, along with someday enabling symbiotic between humans and artificial intelligence, which we'll touch on more in just a little bit. Now, Musk casually described it as like a Fitbit in your skull, and he has some very ambitious hopes and dreams for this device, claiming that installing a Neuralink chip to replace a small portion of the skull could restore limb function, improve human movement, resolve issues with eyesight and hearing, and even help with diseases like Parkinson's, which would be fantastic. On Sunday, Musk announced via the social media app Clubhouse that Neuralink put a computer chip into a monkey's skull and used tiny wires to connect it to its brain. As for why they chose to put an implant inside of a monkey's brain, well, Musk said they're trying to figure out if Neuralink can use its chips to get monkeys to play mind pong with each other. But don't worry, I know what you're thinking. Musk also added, it's not an unhappy monkey. Okay, buddy. Yeah, sure, it starts with apes together pong, then we get apes together strong, and before you know it, we have a full-blown Planet of the Apes on our hands, and I can't even get health care from Dr. Zayas because I'm not an ape. You are a menace. You know, this tracks not only with Musk being the richest man in the world, but also an extremely online, extremely weird dude who tweets reactionary things that sometimes lead to him having to step down as the chairman of one of his companies, because sometimes doing it for the lulls can be very expensive. During the Clubhouse conversation, Musk also discussed Mars colonies, cryptocurrency, and SpaceX, which earlier this week unfortunately suffered another crash while testing their Starship SN9 rocket at their facility in Boca Chica, Texas. Now, old Muskie boy also addressed artificial intelligence intelligence pretty heavily during this presentation. AI has been slowly growing more and more advanced over the years, and according to Musk, Neuralink's technology could possibly allow humans to go along for the ride. Musk pointed to breakthroughs made at research labs like OpenAI, which he co-founded, and DeepMind, an AI lab in London that Google purchased back in 2014. Now, Musk, who was a very early investor in the company, stated that DeepMind has run out of games to win at, basically. He also stated that people are basically already cyborgs because they have a tertiary digital layer thanks to our smartphones, computers, and other applications that we use each and every day. Musk said with a direct neural interface, we can improve the bandwidth between your cortex and your digital tertiary layer by many orders of magnitude. I'd say probably at least 1,000 or maybe 10,000 or more. So in tandem with the goal of helping people with regaining motor or cognitive functions, it also sounds like Musk is interested in using this technology to help people connect with day-to-day -day technology in a far more literal sense, such as giving quadriplegics the ability to control devices just by thinking about them. He also said that in the long term, it could work as a form of telepathy, which in my case, no thank you, because my brain is mostly old commercials from my youth and imaginary lyrics to the Amazing Race theme song, and let's be real, nobody needs that invading their cortex during the workday. I'm like Proust, but way shittier. This also brings up the question of humans potentially interfacing with AI and computer learning in the future. People who had this device would have the ability to theoretically learn things far faster with the assistance of downloading information into their brains, in a sense. It's kind of like learning Kung Fu in the Matrix, but instead of Kung Fu, it's just how to properly fix your car's transmission. And that brings us back to the monkey. Now, if Neuralink is going to keep pushing the boundaries of what we've been able to learn with the aid of artificial intelligence, we highly recommend removing the chips from the monkey's brains before they're able to learn exactly how many of them we shot into space in the name of science, because it was a lot of them and nothing good can come from them knowing just how much. Like, they cannot know this. 
Now, Musk ended the meeting by trying to entice people who are talented at designing Fitbits, Apple Watches, and computers of various kinds to come and work at Neuralink. And he said they'll probably be releasing videos that show the company's progress in the next month or so. So with that said, we'll likely have to wait just a little while longer to find out if the monkeys have also found a way to play Snake or, heaven forbid, Fortnite in their mind. But tell me, what do you think? Do you think we'll be any closer to cybernetic enhancements in the near future? Do you think that we're flying too close to the sun? And what theme song is stuck in your head? Let us know in the comments below, and for the latest in pop culture, stay tuned to Nerdist.com.